Rastafarianism, a lot of people think that Rastafarianism is a religion. Now, I, I know that we, we have few terms that will fit. Uh, we either say religion or philosophy. A philosophy, in my definition, is a manageable world and life view, okay, that people select uh, to make life easier for them. Whereas religion is a, f is a following of a faith or a set of beliefs that include, incorporate how we live here will determine our afterlife. Rastafarianism is kind of a, a merger of both. I would call it a geopolitical system that has religious overtones. It incorporates pieces of um, teaching from the Bible with uh, social uh, situations and definitely comp uh, with a, an Afrocentric worldview. Um, Africa is, is, is the mother earth and that is the plan. Uh, it, has a, it has a stemming um, um, a constancy that is always looking back to Africa as its roots because those who are Rastafari believe that they are the original, blacks, black people are the original tribes of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel, with a mm -hmm. focus on the nation or the tribe of Judah. Back in around nine, late 1920s, you know in America, blacks were basically disenfranchised, not just America, but uh, in the Caribbean islands also, especially in Jamaica. Uh, the, here's people who are just a generation or two away from slavery. And being um, um, free to a degree, there is this movement propagated by a very sound and very devout Christian man by the name of Marcus Garvey. A lot of people think that Marcus Gar Garvey is the father of Rastafari, and he's not. But he did have a back to Africa mentality where he was trying to unite black people to say, don't lose your roots. You have a homeland, you have a, you have a culture, you have a, a language and a people. Uh, and uh, his, his thrust in that was very strong, but he never, ever, denounced his faith in Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, in one of the largest gatherings before he died, he spoke about his belief in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the fact that he was a believer in the Nicene Creed, that Jesus Christ died for his sins, and he loved him as a personal Lord and Savior. Marcus Garvey was a very devout Christian. Hmm. Um, however, um, when Marcus Garvey, the, the Rastafari, I believe that Marcus Garvey was a prophet, second only to John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. On November 2nd, uh, Haile Selassie the first was, was crowned um, uh, Rastafari, okay? And uh, that was the day that a lot of blacks, especially those of Jamaica, saw as the day that was a fulfillment of prophecy. And that fulfillment of prophecy, prophecy was out of se Second Edras, uh, out of the, um, the, um, the Apocrypha, right. uh, chapter seven. And they're saying, because of that, this man is now, ready for this, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He is the, the, the Lord of the Second Advent. He is the return of Jesus Christ. Wow. Okay, they gave him divine honors. Now, what's important about that is that he constantly denounced that idea. Haile Selassie said, I am not Jesus Christ and I am not God. Well, as a response to that, the Rastafari said, well, only God would say he was. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's, that was their response to that. He's just trying to be humble. His teaching, the fact that he was a king of a major com uh, country in Africa, Ethiopia, uh, that, that, uh, that was uh, him re resuming his rightful role as the Lion of Judah. Okay, now with that came a whole lot of emphasis and importance because when you see a Rastafari with dreadlocks, what he is saying is, is that if you know the, the history of Israel and, and the tribes of uh, Israel, Judah uh, symbol was a lion. So they, they, they oh. identified with the lion's mane with the dreadlocks. Matter of okay. fact, they say that, that uh, Samson was a Rastafari in his original form and the Nazarite vow because he had seven locks in his hair. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, even Absalom with his thick hair. He was dreadlocks. They say it was dreadlocks. So they give all kinds of honors to that. Well, on that day, November 2nd, 1930, was the beginning. They call that uh, Ground Nation Day, was the day that they still... Um, they still uh, recognize and celebrate on uh, is the day that was the birth of the movement because the fulfillment of prophecy has happened. Okay, um, and ganja is we you know call it marijuana. Um, uh, they take great skill in using what they consider to be the best or the, the finest, um, and uh, the the whole idea of smoking of ganja is in their mind um, something that's fulfilled of scripture. Psalm 104, Psalm 68, so on and so forth, where uh, the scripture talks about herb for man. 
and that's what ganja means. And they they smoke it because it's supposed to enlighten the mind, give you another sense of an opening to spiritual reality. Uh, so smoking a ganja, and then it's a very big uh, part of that. Uh, their belief is to discuss social political is issues as it rel relates to blacks and Africa, and how the fulfillment of scripture and prophecy and the worship of Haile Selassie is going to one day culminate into that where he's going to come back and uh, uh, it's going to be Judgment Day and all those who have been living like they should and righteously and maintaining their position are going to be treated as one way and then there will be some type of judgment for others. I'd say uh, that the majority, the, the, the vast majority of Rastafari are from Jamaica or the neighboring Caribbean islands like uh, Trinidad and Tobago and so, that sort of thing. It is, does have some roots a lot in New York and some in Chicago, but still the main thrust is in, in the Jamaican Caribbean area. Uh, a lot of people know about it stri strictly because of the, the music of Bob Marley. Bob yeah, Marley was the best yeah. thing that happened to Rastafari. Right, okay? right, right. And um, um, Bob Marley's wife, as a matter of fact, became uh, Rastafari in 1966 when she heard or saw Haile Selassie when he first came to Jamaica. Okay, okay. So that's kind of like the, the history of it. It got, has a strong foundation. Matter of fact, in 19, I think it was 1997, the uh, UN gave it consulting honors. It's not a, con a country, but it has a worldview that can influence others, so the UN even recognizes it. Rastafari would not be uh, very happy if we call them Rastafarians because they believe the Rastafari is that's the coronation name of Haile Selassie. Uh, to to give them that Rastafarian kind of view is to give them. Uh, they say that word doesn't exist. Okay, Rasta meaning head and Farai meaning high priest or or head of state, and the I means that he was first, and so everybody relates to him and give honor to him by having that Rastafari. So it's used Roman num numeral one f to relate that. So it's really not honoring to them to call them Rastafarian. In their view of God, uh, basically, they have a very um, high respect for what we know to be the Bible, uh, mm -hmm. especially the King James Version. Uh, they, they understand the Genesis account. They are very, very uh, clear and loyal to the whole uh, Abrahamic uh, Semitic line, of course, because they believe that's where black people, uh, the tribes represent, are representative of the blacks. So the, the first book of the Bible, Genesis, is extremely important to them. Now, they will say that parts of the Bible have been uh, misinterpreted and that what we have, our 66 books, is only half the Bible. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because they said there's parts of the Bible that have been taken away and uh, have not been included like it should, things that have been hidden, most of them to be keep black people oppressed and that sort of thing. So there is another Bible, other half of the Bible, but it's in every person's heart. And it takes the worship and the following of the teachings of Haile Selassie to have those things, and of course, smoking of ganja. Um, they, they do have a very high sense of morality. Um, they are uh, very um, um, keen on certain issues that other people would find be more tolerant of. Um, there is a sect of, of, uh, of the Rastafari that do not in any way condone homosexuality. There are some that are more open-ended, but um, they, they do see a lot of moral issues. They believe that uh, men should be uh, strong fathers and family men and that sort of thing. They have a view of wrong in its, in its sense brother to brother kind of thing. Don't, don't violate the person um, because that's, that's an offense to God in that way. Uh, they do view um, the scripture basics tenets that we would know to be um, um, what we would call issues of holiness. They would call issues of morality uh, sin. They do believe that Jesus Christ uh, uh, came to earth uh, they believe that um, um, that he uh, was deity. However, they believe that he came back to earth as Haile Selassie. And they believe that he is the Messiah, even though, like I said before, he does not, he never ascribed to that. He, as a matter of fact, he, he vehemently denied that. He was the son of God. However, they do believe that there are parts of the Bible in that whole scenario that were left out or that were ignored or were purposely hidden um, and that kind of thing. Uh, they do believe that Jesus was black, of course, because he was from the line of Judah. They believe that Jesus Christ uh, was the savior of the world. 
they believe that Jesus Christ, when you talk about the whole sin, sin issue, it gets a little muddy. Now the reason is, is because they're not a unified belief. You, could, you couldn't really, different from say the Nation of Islam or, or uh, any other Afrocentric kind of religion, you could not pin them down and get a statement of faith. Okay. That's why I wouldn't readily call them a religion because it's more, they, they don't really believe like we do about eternal judgment. They believe not in everlasting life, but ever life. Now, ever life in their mind is that there are some chosen people who, um, I guess Holly Selassie will choose, who will live in their physical bodies forever and never die. They don't believe in an afterlife, after physical life, or spiritual life that will go on forever. They don't believe in that. Again, we got to be careful because Rastafari goes two routes. One does have a, uh, a sort of loose bedrock, gravel bedrock, in Judeo-Christian value and, and understanding. Other side of it has a Hindu pantheistic worldview. So you have to be careful which side you're talking about because there is a teaching in, in the Rastafari, among some Rastafari, that believe that, that God is man and man is God. And you know, that's strict pantheism. So uh, you have to be careful which side you're dealing with. And it can be, uh, some of the bases of that can be some influences, other world influences that made their way into the, the Jamaican culture. He died uh, in 1975. Now they say that he really didn't die. He went to a plane of existence. Now this is some. Some believe that he, he went to a plane of existence and he is waiting uh, for the right time to come back. And then that's going to be judgment day and he's going to call me everything back to a Afrocentric because he, they believe that Africa is the mother earth. It is the, it is the place where everything should be ruled and reigned from, especially Ethiopia. Um, and when he comes back, that's when all those things will be culminated and he'll rule and reign. Now, uh, then there's others who believe that he did die but he was resurrected, and then he's gonna come back. Some believe he didn't die, went to another plane of existence, others believe he did die, and he's just gonna come back, like in the manner he did as Jesus Christ. It's exclusive, and there is, um, um, I, I guess, a, a certain group of people who are the faithful that we call Rastafari, uh, but there are still people who are sympathetic to it, and still people who, who gravitate toward it by the smoking of ganja and the, and the dreadlocks who are not I would say the true faithful, but the ones who really believe and who really uh, ad adhere to the teaching, their view of Christians are we misguided because we don't have a fullness of the truth because we only, we're only using half the Bible and not seeking the other half. So as a result of that, uh, we can't know the full truth. We therefore cannot honor the full truth. We cannot honor the full truth. We cannot worship Ali Selassie for who he is and what his value is to us. Uh, they believe that white people, um, they, uh, Ali Selassie, uh, said and, and was very clear that there is um, that discrimination because at one time there was a, a, a you could see a beginning seeds of, of a bitterness toward um, white people because you have to remember when this all started black people were disenfranchised it, we were uh, second class even third class citizens so there's a lot of people who were looking at this their moment to get revenge or to 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 get a, um, a more powerful political worldview with, with uh, Haile Selassie saying that any discrimination is wrong and sinful, that fraction kind of died right away. So there's a view of whites, but the view of whites is not that they were inferior, they're just not part of the 12 tribes. Only black people will enjoy that kingdom that, that Haile Selassie is going to bring in the earth. Okay, um, And I guess that even among us blacks, those of those of us who did not follow completely will not have the status of those who did. I think that the whole mindset, if you were to look at it and get uh, a consensus, not there's nothing hard and fast again, mm -hmm. but if you got a consensus, basically you'd have uh, most of Rastafari, say, Rastafari saying that uh, Haile Selassie is really trying to get all the 12 tribes together. That means all the black people. Okay? Uh, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get them all back in Africa and that's gonna be his kingdom reign. They believe that uh, Solomon, uh, when he had was visited by Queen Sheba, which is interesting, um, the uh, scripture says that he sent her back and had given her all of uh, so much treasure out of his kingdom, and they interpret that treasure out of his kingdom was he impregnated her. Okay. And she took this child back, and this child that she took back to Ethiopia began to be the race that produced, and that that child was the was the beginning of the twelve tribes of Israel.
and that 12 tribes of Israel flourished in Africa and uh, so on and so forth. It's, and here's one of the major problems with Rastafari is that it uses scripture when it wants to in the way that it wants to. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's, it's one of the more, uh, un, un, unfortunately, one of the, the sadder cases of taking scripture out of context. Yeah. And they just choose what they want when they want to use it. Rastafari, Rastafari I believe, is a teaching and a philosophy and this is my opinion only and it's not a religion a religion does not it usually has a set of core values um, that are easily spelled out a certain uh, policies of adherence that its followers can point to and say okay this is exactly what I need to know this is how I I should act this is how I should live this is how I should worship such things like that are not written out it's supposed to be a pursuit of truth and a search for truth that you'll discover on your own how to live. That means that it's basically left up to my interpretation. And, and, and leaving, and there's really only one or two documents that have ever be, even been penned to say what Rastafari believe and how they should act. And they're not wet, widely spread or known. You can almost have to be in the know to get to them. Um, but even in all of that, because there is no hard and fast doctrine, it's very hard to be uh, what I would say a pure Rastafari. Because like I said, you can go either the Hindu, Hindu aspect of it or the Judeo-Christian kind of value of it. So your view of God, your view of Christ, your view of Holly Selassie, did he die, did he resurrect, all those sort of things are kind of nebulous because there's no hard and fast. What we call our, the Bible is our uh, infallible source. It is no matter how much you want to interpret the wrong or right, right, you have some place you can turn and look. Not so with the Rastafari. Um, one of the things that you have to do, if you are just one of those people who walk up to a Rastafari who knows his stuff, he's going to literally just talk you to death. He's just going to talk, 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 talk about social issues, the Africa, the history, so on and so forth. When the real issue is not us having an intellectual discussion, but the salvation of your soul. So at that point, every common point that every person who needs to be saved, and we need to reach is their soul. What's going on with your soul? And all the teachings of whoever Rastafari believe in does not address the issue of peace, of purpose, of um, um, uh, divine intent for your life, uh, dealing with the issue of sin, how you can change. The four great questions. Um, how did it all begin? Why am I the way I am? How do I change? What happens when I die? If you approach those, uh, Rastafari with those four questions and get him not to contradict and hold him to that, you'll find that he doesn't have a solid answer. And that's the basis of witnessing for them. They can only trust that. Now they'll say they knew, but you cannot get them to lock down and tell me, all right, well, tell me the process. How did you get there? How did you arrive? And then if usually in, in the, I don't know how many people I've talked to on this issue, well, they'll all start on this long diatribe that is never cohesive. And I just ask them, give me some, give me a one through 10. And they never can make it. I have talked to people in Jamaica who are, are are supposed to be the, the most enlightened ones. They can't give me a one through 10 on how do I get there? How do I arrive? How do I make it? How do I get to this point where you're saying I need to be where I'm finally at the truth? And then they say, well, you'll just know. Well, okay, well, how will I know that I know? You know right. They can't do that.